with the Discovery Foundation. That's a nonprofit group that does mostly environmental education in the schools. And we've been contracted by the State Department of Environmental Conservation to do a program called Water Watch that uh, is mainly uh, working with kids in, right now in the middle school, eighth graders, Floyd Dryden, getting them out on uh, Duck Creek, which is uh, kind of a focus stream for a big restoration effort that's happening right now. First of all, what is your interest in Duck Creek or your reason of involvement? Uh, my own history with this is kind of recent. Um, the Water Watch program was started over a year ago and I kind of uh, came into it uh, as, a, as a naturalist who is uh, doing a lot of education in the schools and projects like mapping that um, people felt would be valuable to the, to the uh, Duck Creek restoration effort. Um, I uh, actually have a long-term interest in uh, places that have problems. Um, I began working with an environmental consultant years ago who uh, really got me interested in places that I uh, up until about five years ago working with Dan Bishop. I spent uh, most of my time looking at really pristine wilderness areas and um, working with my friend Dan I got more interested in places that are environmentally in trouble and could, could use you know people thinking about ways to treat them better and Duck Creek is probably the classic example of that kind of habitat. It's the most polluted stream in southeast Alaska. And you've been educating students on Duck Creek as a representative from your group. Why, yeah. why is that so important, do you think? That, that people know about Duck Creek? Um, to me, the, and also to, to the group I work directly for, the Discovery Foundation, that the places that we should be spending time in uh, as educators are the places where we live, not, not the exotic field trip destinations but the place is right in our backyard and that that's a, a theme for everything that the Discovery Foundation does when we take third fourth and fifth graders out we're showing them the same places that they play in uh, the Harbor View kids are doing work right in the cemetery across the street and, uh, and in the case of the valley Duck Creek is uh, a lot of people don't even know what Duck Creek is they think it's a, a ditch in their backyards but it's it's right there a very large segment of the Juno population lives in the Duck Creek watershed. And what is the Discovery Foundation's ultimate goal with Duck Creek? Uh, well, our, it, it probably, our, our, the Discovery Foundation's goal is the goal of the uh, Duck Creek Advisory Group who hired us to do this program. Uh, we're trying to meet their, their goals of uh, making Duck Creek a better 
place for people and critters, um, but better fish habitat, uh, a more inviting place to live in, a place that kids can play in without health hazards. And, uh, and the Discovery Foundation has, has been hired by what, the Department of Environmental Conservation to do this Water Watch project. So it's probably better to, to say well, that the, the goals were set up by them and we're, and we're trying, doing our best to, to um, over the course of a few years, work toward that, that goal of re restoration. And in addition to restoration, just greater public knowledge of what Duck Creek is, you know, what, what it could be, what, what it has been, what it is now, which is um, a bummer, and what, uh, what it could be with a little work or a lot of work. And how would you go about doing that? Who would um, pay for the restoration? Would it be the city's obligation or what? Uh, right now, there is a lot of money dedicated to Duck Creek, and it's um, EPA money, Environmental Protection Act funds, that are federal funds that are channeled through the State Department of Environmental Conservation, which is also paying my salary as a water watch instructor. But uh, um, a great deal more money is set aside for things like uh, replacing culverts that are, that are poorly designed, um, putting up snow fences that, to keep uh, um, snow plows from shoveling debris that contains toxins directly into the stream, things like that. So there is a great deal of federal money available on Duck Creek right now because it is a kind of a model restoration project. Um, one of the most important questions is how do you develop without disturbing the water streams in Alaska, all over Alaska? Yeah, yeah. Um, it, that, that's a key issue on Duck Creek. And uh, for instance, the Duck Creek Advisory Group um, now is in a position to oversee any um, uh, permits for or, or plans for development along Duck Creek. And we have monthly meetings. And I would estimate that at every monthly meeting, at least two, three, four, sometimes five projects come before the advisory group of uh, individuals that want, say, a variance from the 50-foot setback. Uh, even though a great deal of the creek is privately owned, um, technically a private landowner can't build or do certain construction activities within 50 feet of the stream. Um, that's um, ignored in the past and, um, and even ignored in construction act activities. A lot of people um, exceed that 50-foot setback maybe without realizing it's a problem or trying to get away with it or actually coming before the board and asking for a variance. Um, but there, yeah, there, there's a lot of pressure. There are ways to build without impacting the stream um, and the advisory group is trying to work cooperatively with landowners to accomplish that. Um, in general, nobody right now is doing it the wrist slapping kind of stuff. It's more um, trying to get into cooperative relations with landowners. There's one program uh, is available right now. To, if a private landowner wants to do an uh, enhancement or restoration project on the stream, which would improve habitat, say for fish, um, the fish and wildlife can match anything they do with, with um, they have up to $40,000 to spend on that. And that any individual project could be up to $10,000 worth. And not necessarily money on the landowner's part. The, the, the owner could contribute, say, labor, and that would be matched by federal funds. And how, I mean, what ways are you getting the community involved besides educating? And what groups in the community are you getting involved? OK. Uh, probably not fair to say us because the uh, I, I'm pretty pretty much of a newcomer to this project but the Duck Creek Advisory Gr Group is composed of um, a really impressive spectrum of people from private landowners to groups like Trout Unlimited to um, every uh, state and federal and borough agency has representation on the advisory advisory group um, I don't know if that 
completely answers your question, but uh, we had a public meeting uh, just a few days ago, and uh, that was the first time that we really got a good turnout of uh, people that live on the stream. There's been a, a great deal of uh, work and money put into the stream by various agencies, um, but the, the public meeting just a few nights ago was the first time we re really got to take the project before the public and get a, lo a lot of good feedback from people that live along the stream. And that was really encouraging to see something hatching there. I think we're going to start to see, um, say, a Friends of Duck Creek type group that's more, you know, the, the people that live there than the, uh, the specialists and researchers that are working on the stream. Um, I've been out to Duck Creek, and it's I've seen firsthand how polluted it is. Is it really worth the money to get this habitat back going? And I mean, what is the hope for it, considering it's directly off the highway? And I mean, is it how valuable is it to us? That's a question a lot of people are asking. Um, did we pick the right street, or the other better places to spend money? And I, I think the answer would be yes, there are better places, depending on your goals. If, if your goal is, is uh, fish enhancement, um, there are probably easier streams to fix up that could return more fish per dollar. But uh, Duck Creek was selected for more reasons than just that. It's, a, uh, uh, it's equally important to us to get the public aware of stream issues. And, uh, and Duck Creek being right in everybody's backyard is a perfect site for that. Um, I don't know what the results of all, all this effort will be as far as en enhancement. I personally feel that if, um, if people, say, say it's a total failure, say that we don't enhance it at all, um, but people at least come to recognize the problems that Duck Creek has got, uh, and decide that they don't want to see that happening to, say, Jordan Creek or Montana Creek or uh, other creeks that are equally endangered in, in the Juno area in the long run. I think we'd, that that would be a success. It'd be well worth the money that we put into it. I don't. Uh, that may sound negative. I hope that we can um, restore Duck Creek to um, to some degree. Uh, one good example of something that's happened already is that Stephen Richards, where culvert was replaced, Stephen Richards Drive is about halfway up Duck Creek. Um, there were a couple uh, perched culverts, that means culverts that were installed too high and they were causing ponding upstream, um, impeding water flow. They were pulled out and replaced with a bottomless arch, which is instead of a, uh, a round culvert. There's there's nothing on the bottom. It's about a 17-foot span, and the the idea of a bottomless arch is it allows the stream to downgrade and, and and flush better. And just in the year since that was replaced, that, that section of Duck Creek uh, is beginning to look a lot better. There's a lot better flow and better better habitat. So a little bit at a time, I think we can improve it. I don't know if we can totally solve all the problems that Duck Creek faces. All right, and last but not least, this video is going to be shown to several kids throughout the oceanography and biology classes um, in the high school. Is there anything you would like to say to them, maybe a message to the public about Duck Creek? Uh, yeah, I think places like Duck Creek really need our attention, and I, I really uh, am solidly behind the, the concept of the, the Duck Creek Advisory Group has established of, of looking at the places that we live in, not just, I, th I think as Alaskans, we kind of have the attitude that we have all this wonderful wilderness around us, and so what if you know, we lose a stream here and there, but uh, uh, I think if you look to, look down the road, Alaska can can share the fate of a lot of places that don't have wilderness. That that we got to start to think about the, the, the places closer to us. That uh, uh, our kids grow up there, and, and it's, uh, little kids maybe can't can't uh, travel great distances to more pristine areas. I think that's kind of the value of the, the Duck Creek project.